Congressman, let's start with abortion. It's an issue you've talked a lot about lately. You wrote the op-ed for the Dallas Morning News on this issue as well. How much of a motivator do you think that single issue is going to be yeah. when it comes to voter turnout this year? Well, I think it's a motivator. I think it's also our reality. Uh, my wife and I have had two baby boys at Baylor uh, in the last five years, uh, and I just can't imagine how we would have handled it uh, if our doctor had come in and said there's a problem with the baby or with the pregnancy. You have to make a very difficult decision, but there's nothing that I can do to help you. That's the reality that's happening in our state right now. Uh, the Kate Cox story, I think, is one uh, that just brought home uh, what it means to have an almost total ban on abortion in our state, which is what we're experiencing right now. It's a mother of two who had to go to the emergency room four times, whose doctor said she needed a medically necessary procedure, and who couldn't get it in our state and had to leave. That's unacceptable. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals just sided with Texas, as you know, the other day, and said that, that hospitals don't have to provide our emergency abortion care, like the Kate Cox case That's here. Right. There's nothing the federal government can do on this since the Supreme Court already ruled besides trying to codify this, right? That's right. Well, at the federal level, as you said, we have to codify Roe v. Wade, go back to the standard that we've had for the last 50 years, because what we're going to have now is that lawyers, not doctors, are going to be determining whether or not a woman is sick enough for her to get the care that her doctor thinks she needs. Because in every hospital around our state, they're going to be having a conversation now if they have a high-risk pregnancy about their liability, but whether or not they'll be criminally held responsible if they try and give a woman who maybe has got some kind of crisis that she's going through the care that she needs. And it's unacceptable, and it's going to have so many downstream impacts for our state. I think we've not really seen just how bad this is going to be for us, both in terms of our university systems, in terms of our business uh, community and economy. This is going to have so many impacts of people saying that Texas is not a place where we want to be until we get this fixed. As you travel around the state, what are Texans saying about abortion? How big of a yeah. deal is it to them? It's a big deal, because I think we're about freedom in our state. Fundamentally, I think Texans want to be left alone. Uh, they want to be able to pursue you know, their version of the American dream. Uh, we're not really in favor of government making personal decisions for you, and that's what we're seeing right here. If you're concerned about big government, which I think a lot of Texans are, this is what it looks like. It's telling you and your doctor what you can do as opposed to uh, you doing what you know is medically necessary for you. And so this, this I think crosses so many different lines and it's not just about you know, a woman's right to choose which is incredibly important. It's also about sending a message about whether or not we are a state that's run by extremists with extreme policies and that's not who we are. I want to ask the politics of this. Harvard had a study out last month saying abortion's a big motivator for young people to go vote this year. But the study also showed that fewer young people actually plan to go vote in November compared to four years ago. How concerning is that? We'll see. We'll see. I think that we're going to have to make sure that we get folks across the board engaged. And I think this is an incredibly important election here in Texas. We're going to have a very stark choice uh, between, I think, the most extreme senator in the country, one who's been one of the most divisive uh, leaders on the national stage for a decade now, versus me, who's the, literally the most bipartisan member of the Texas delegation. And for us as Texans, we have to send a message about who we are because a lot of folks are looking at us and wondering what's happening in Texas. And I can tell you, I'm a fourth generation Texan. This is not who we are. We're not a state where, you know, these have just run by extremists. We're a state that understands uh, that people should be left to their own devices, be given freedom, a chance to taste their version of the American dream. That's not occurring right now. We can fix it. You don't necessarily believe the, the Harvard <laughs> I think every, pool every, here? every uh, study I see, uh, and every time I've been on the ballot, uh, in recent years, we've had a lot of people engaged. And I think that's going to happen again. So, yeah, uh, We talked about codification of uh, Roe v. Wade there. Let me ask you about this one here. Super Tuesday is two months away. Can you win the primary without a runoff? Our goal is to make sure that every Texas Democrat or anybody who's going to engage in the Texas Democratic primary knows that I'm going to beat Ted Cruz on November 5th, that I'm the only person who can do that, and that I'll also bring our state back together after that. But, but there's nine people on the Democratic ballot here. Yeah. You, you announced first. You have a, a, an, ad, an advantage when it comes to fundraising. And in the polls, do you think this will go to a runoff? Yeah. Well, I've run tough races before. And I know how uh, to, to be in a tough race and to make sure uh, that we are appealing broadly to folks. And our goal, of course, is to make sure as quickly as possible we can start focusing on Ted Cruz. Uh, but as you know, in 2018, I had a seven-person primary that I won by 20 points, a runoff I won by 40, and then uh, beat a 22-year incumbent by seven. So I understand that, th that you know, this is our process in Texas. My goal, of course, is to make sure as many Texas Democrats as possible know who I am and know what I want to do. I want to ask you about something that's out in your fundraising uh, emails that I get a lot of, by the way, okay. and not just yours, but everyone else's. Uh, Inside Elections is, is a, an organization that, that rates different um, uh, 
uh, congressional districts across the country. It had this race ranked as a battleground last May when you announced. By November, though, that has switched back to likely Republican. What do you think happened in that? Do you think they're losing traction at all? No, I think that there's not much information to go on. Uh, and I think that, listen, uh, we are a competitive state. And what we're gonna make sure folks know uh, is that Ted Cruz is somebody we can't afford to have as our senator for the next six years, who's not been doing the job over the last six years, who abandoned us when we had a statewide crisis and 30 million Texans were freezing in the dark, who's, I think, you know, one of the architects of January 6th, who has been somebody who's voted against consistently the legislation that is most helpful to our state, whether it's the Infrastructure Bill, or the Chips and Science Act, or after Uvalde, the Safer Communities Act. This is somebody who's not done the job, and I will. Last thing I want to ask you about is, is fundraising as well. The, the deadline was the end of December. Uh, you have led when it comes to fundraising. What, what will we see in the next report? Well, I'm, I'm incredibly you know, thankful uh, for the outpouring of support that we've had. We will continue to show that we have the campaign that's ready and, and able uh, to beat Ted Cruz, and that's what I think you'll see reflected in our last fundraising and going forward. And in every metric that we can show, I think we're showing that folks are excited and they're ready for us to move on from Ted Cruz. Congressman, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Jason.